Hey, welcome back to another Mind the Mic. Back with another guest, another special guest in the building. Known as uh, TikTok Gary. Flipped his whole script in life. He went from dope dealer to hope dealer. My man Gary White, what's good my brother? What's happening, Shubs? Thank you for the opportunity, bro. It's, it's an honor to be here, man. Any chance I get to push a positive message off the back of my brand, I'm always showing up, you know, so thank you very much, brother. Nah, thank you, man. Thank you. The pleasure's all mine, brother, for sure. Uh, yeah, tell the people a little bit about yourself, brother, people who don't know you, or even people that may see you on TikTok or whatever, or on social media somewhere, but maybe haven't heard a bit more about you, you know, like the how, yeah, how bro, Gary but... became to be Gary. Um, so, yeah, man, I come from the western suburbs of Melbourne, grimy area out there called Melton. It's Melton. like, uh, lo- yeah, Melton, uh, low economic area, you know. So, they got a racetrack out there? Yeah, yeah, they do. They have the, oh, yeah. the thoroughbred racetrack. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember seeing the that at the TAB, Melton. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah it's, a, it's a little town of its own, you know. Um, in the western suburbs of Melbourne, it's like, so we're the last of the West. So we've got a few paddocks that surround us. So like usually through the West, you know, in Melbourne, they're back to back house. Every, every area is sort of back to back. Whereas we got yeah. that gap, you know, so we're the last. Oh, one. true. Separated. So yeah. Separated, a little secluded, you know? Um, but yeah, man, it's pretty grimy out there. A lot of, you know, a lot of broken homes, it's, it's low housing. So, you know, a lot of people go out there, cheap housing out the West. Yeah, a lot of single moms, you know, a lot of domestic violence, you know, drug activity, all that crazy shit, man. And um, so, yeah, man, I just grew up in that area. Mum was a good person. Mum's a nurse. She's been a nurse all life. Uh, Dad was an alcoholic. He wasn't at home much, you know. So financially, we weren't doing too well, you know. Mum had three boys, you know, house, bills, all the rest of it. So we're pretty broke. But uh, mum, mum gave it a red-hot crack. And then, man, by the time I was a teenager and stepped out the house, like, I just had no male role models, you know? So, look around the area. I'm looking up to the guys with gold chains and the Nikes, you know what I mean? The ones pushing the poison. Mm. And that was the that was the avenue I took, bro. So, yeah, man, I ended up taking on a shit career of being a criminal, you know? And um, occupational hazard of that life is it doesn't end well. It always ends bad. And so, yeah, man, I, um, you know, years jail, seven years prison. So, uh, convicted drug trafficker, serious violent offender, I've been stabbed, shot up, modifications, like, you know, like, you name it, bro. It's, like, just ugly, yeah, grimy as. So I was a pro- I ended up becoming yeah. a product of my environment, you know. And yeah. um, I ended up, when I was about in my early 30s, I um, beat a really big case. So I went, I took a really big case of a bunch of kidnappings, like a, a handful of ki- kidnappings, alleged gang-related kidnappings, and, I was looking at anywhere from minimum for 15 to 25 years. And so like click of a fingers, you know, like that. I was sitting there thinking, well, this isn't all cracked up to be, is it? You know, this is no fun. You know, like the streets lie into you, you know, like you grow up and you think it's all about the chains and the cars and the oi bays and I'm going to rock, mm. you know, the ladies and all that. It's all cool. You know, it seems all cool. It's, it's not until, you know, you go through the, the real nitty gritty of it that you realize it's all bullshit, you know, it's all, it's all fake, you know, it's a fake ass world. The streets are, they're lying. The, the, the top layer is all, makes it sound all cool. It's very enticing. You know, the movies and the music do it too. You know, they tell you how, yeah. how it's going to be, but how it's not, not how it really is, you know? And um, so when I, when I found out for what it was, I thought, fuck, this is shit, man. I'm over this shit. And um, I, at that stage, I didn't know I was going to get another shot at life. So anyway, I ended up being found not guilty which was really cool. Yeah. Oh, of really all the cool. kidnappings and that. Yeah, yeah. So I got found not guilty for that. And, um, you know, I was looking, you know, when we were sitting in the courtroom, man, I, you know, I'm looking at the rest of my life in prison, mate. You know, like, it's hard to get your head around that. What's that you know, like, brother? No amount... What's that like sitting in a courtroom for something you didn't do, having the potential to be gone away yeah. forever? Of course, brother. Like, it sucks, you know, and um, it really was hardcore. And, you know, a lot of police corruption too, you know, the police are a gang in themselves. So if they can't get you for something, they'll stitch up for something else. And I've seen it happen before, you know. Uh, you don't want to play ball. Man, they're the biggest gang in the world. So, you know, when they, when they want to when they want to stitch you up, they definitely can. So, you know, I, I was like, oh, this could be fun. This could go sideways, you know. Bitten off more yeah. than I can chew. One of my mates, um, he ended up killing himself during trial. So, oh, um, true. He was he up for it too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... 
there's a crew of us boys, you know, there was like five of us. And um, one of the boys, he didn't rock up a court and uh, his lawyer said, did you hear what happened last night? And he killed himself in the cell, you know, hanged oh. himself in the cell. So like he, and he just didn't want to see the end result. And uh, in the letter he left, in the letter he left, he actually let a letter that said, you know, like, whether I win or lose these trials, it's not what it's about. It's, um, I don't know how to live any other way. So even if I get out and, you know, have a crack at life again, eventually I'm going to lose everything and come back to prison because that's all he knew, you know. He only knew how to survive on the streets. So that shit yeah. sort of sits with you, you know. You, these are the things that make you think the otherwise. But anyway, so again... Getting where I'm going, um, I end up walking away scot free, you know, and um, oh, I got really depressed because I didn't want to be a criminal anymore. So I, I decided I'm over this life, you know. And now, at the early 30s, you know, by this stage, I'm heading into my mid 30s. Now I want to be a normal civilian. I want to, you know, open up a bank account. I want to go get a job. I want to pay my taxes, you know what I mean? I, all yeah, this crazy yeah. stuff, I want to earn a normal wage. I just want to be the normal guy watering his lawn in, in, in the street, you know? How hard is that, and, though, brother, coming from the life that you came from and being all you knew? Well, it was super hard. It was um super, super hard. One Probably the hardest thing I've ever had to do in my life. Um, I come crashing down around me. My whole world come crashing down around me. I had the, the like, you know, my chest out, my head up, as a man does. And I'll be right, I'll be right. You know, this is the right choice, but... Yeah, you know, internally and mentally, man, I had some real demons going on. And um, one day I woke up, tried to take my own life. And then I called the police on myself and I tried to be shot by cops. So, like, I'm an SVO. So um, yeah. that means I'm a serious fire offender, which means I've got a, there's a different protocol. And so I rang them and said this and said, I'll meet you at the front, you know. And I was expecting to run out for a knife and get shot by him and all this crazy shit, you know. It was just ugly. Um, they fucking didn't work out like that. My missus come home. She ended up talking me out of it, and um, the police talked me out of it, and they took me to hospital. They didn't take me to jail, which was um, which was pretty cool. But I ended How up long ago was out. this, brother? Um, this would have been about five years ago. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Are you yeah. still with the missus now? Nah, 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 nah. From there, I ended up um, getting a rage and drug habit. So that's I, I never had a problem taking drugs um, oh, pretty much okay. on the streets. Yeah, I was a was a drug dealer. You, you but, didn't um, get high on your own supply, eh? Hey? That sort Before. of one, yeah. I was one of them guys, which is, and it just gets nasty when you're in that business, you know. And um, so, like, what happened next was I um, sort of found myself trying to be a normal person in the in the community, and I'm really depressed. And um, I got out of hospital from trying to hurt myself and having a siege with the police, and then um, just went back to the streets and just. Got re- I didn't go back making money or doing crime or anything like that. I just went back and got high, man. It was like, a, mm. you know, if you can imagine a sportsman retires and they put their feet up and have a beer, get depressed because they used to be kicking the winning goal, but now they're not anymore. Yeah, sort of like that, yeah. brother, you know? People were cheering for them, but no one's cheering for them anymore and all the yeah. lights are gone. And, yeah, I get, it. I get what you see. It was that one, bro. It was that one. And um, so for four years, I just rid myself off, bro. Just um, mm. I became a washed-up shell of a man. I don't know if you've seen photos on, on, on or, or reels on, yeah, on TikTok, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I've yeah, seen I, some, brother. I was ugly, bro. <laughs> like, I, I, people were wondering if I had cancer and that. They're going, he's got sick because I, like, was, like, you know, I lost, got down to 50 kilos, man. I was heroin, mm. ice, you know, GHB, pills, weed, alcohol, anything I would get my hands on. I was just trying to numb the pain. Mm. And, yeah, man, like, fucking it was just ugly. It was four years of hell. That was the darkest time in my life. Um, you know, it's, it's really hard and um, ugly, ugly period in, in my life. But also now I look back on it, it was also the most beautiful because it's um, it made me who I am today. I, it was a very humbling experience, you know, uh, coming from a life of in the streets and jail and gangs and, and money and all that, you know, street money and all that bullshit. You, it's a big bravado. It's real ego. You know, it's a materialistic world. So you think you're something special. You know, everybody's trying to be tough. Everybody's, there's no holes in my game. Their chest mm-hmm. out, you know what I mean. I'm a big man. I'm a big man. All them ones, and um, bro, being a washed up drug addict, you know, homeless, starving, sleeping on trap house couches and stuff, it was a massive death of my ego. You know, it really fucking uh, yeah, it really crushed me, man. It squashed me, you know. But um, and it was really hard at the time. 
But now yep. I look back on it, I sort of needed it. I think I needed compassion for the drug addict coming from the guy that used to sell drugs in his, his area. I mean, I pushed poison in my community for a long time and, and then becoming for the guy that was chasing around looking for his next, his next hit. I was sick if I didn't get it. Like, um, you know, it sort of balanced me up. Oh and, um, yeah, anyway, you got to see the the you got to see what happens to you know all the people that you had served you know your stuff to and you know what I mean yeah. the, like the kind of the calamity that you could have like in in your in your own world that you caused at the time back in the days like you got to be the flip of that. Hundred percent, karma, brother, karma. You know, yeah. So it was beautiful. It was a beautiful thing. It sorted me out, it humbled me, man. It, um, the death of my ego was massive, you know, and mm. um. But I also needed that spirit, that warrior spirit that, you know, we've all got in us. I, I still needed that to get clean. So I had to dig deep, you know. Where I'm from, we'd say, you know, the cunt in me, you know. I needed that cunt in me still, you know. I felt like a yeah. broken man, but I, I needed to dig deep to to get clean. So my family put me up and I did it the old school way. I just sweated it out and I got clean. Yeah. And um, Was that easy or was that hard, brother? That was ugly, man. That was so dark. But, you know, part of the reason I'll never go back down that road because I didn't go through the whole detox, rehab system, medication. You know, there's a whole oh, system yeah, yeah. in play that they soften it, they, the soften approach, you know. I, yeah, I got you ran the bull. And... You ran the <laughs> bull, eh, brother? Fuck. Yeah, I got to sweat it out, man. I just sweat it out, man. It was ugly, you know, vomiting and diarrhea and yeah. the sweats and can't sleep and cramps and it's crazy, man. It's crazy, but um, it was good. Because how long? How long ago was this? Bro, that you, um, that you did I've this? been clean for the start of the year. The start of this year was two years. This good. Oh, sorry, so no, 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 no. You... Just just before the start of this year. So I'm about about twenty seven, going on twenty eight months clean. Yeah, so twenty seven. Twenty seven. Since, since, since yeah, they're vomiting yeah. and they're sweet. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's so and brother. as soon as um as soon as I got clean, bro, I started posting. So that's how my yeah. social host so as soon as the second I got clean, man, I was just like, Well, what are you gonna do now? Now I've got rid of crime. I don't have to worry about doing that anymore because I got that off my back, you know. And uh, mm -hmm. and I also got rid of the drug habit that come along with transitioning from that old life to the new life, you know. In the middle there, I was become a bit of a washed up addict. So I got rid of all that and I was like I was free, man. But at this age I was 40, you know, I was 40 looking around going. If only the clothes on my back shoved, you know, going, well, what am I going to yeah. do now? And so I grabbed the phone and just started fucking recording what I was thinking. I told some old war stories from the life, carried yeah, on. Yeah, I remember seeing some of those, brother. Some yeah, fight, yeah, prison but... fights and shit like that, just to get some attention, you know. Uh, um, it worked, brother. It worked. Uh, it, 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 it worked. Yeah, it worked. <laughs> yeah, it worked. And then as soon as um people started looking my way, bro, I just um started pushing that positive shit. And as I know you've seen my content as late, man, I'm pretty much – I'm the sobriety yep. guy. I tell the kids that the dr life of drugs, jail, and crime is not worth it. All that shit, man. You know. So yeah, I've got now. I've got some purpose, some self worth. I mean, created their own brand, Hope Cartel. You know, I'm no longer a dope dealer. I'm a hope dealer, and you know, registered that as a business, and it's doing well, man. Like created, generated multiple sources of income off the back of Hope Cartel and pushing a positive message. And bro, mm. super cool, man. Super cool. I'm wrapped. You know, I've got. I really feel like I'm doing something right in my life now. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, people are probably a lot like more likely to listen to a guy that's been there, done it all on both sides than, you know, someone out of university telling them to get clean because the books taught them, you know what I mean? So this stuff's yeah, good, brother. I know, I know what you yeah, mean. Yeah. Textbook. Good. Textbook. There's, you know, I think textbook is, um, <coughs> there's, some, there's some stuff there that, you know, we can pay attention to, but of course, of be, course. You can't beat, um, experience. Yeah, what do they experience call it? Experience um, is the key, brother. Yeah, experience. Life experiences, you know. Yeah, um, 100%. Yeah, you can't beat that. Yeah, I, I just seen, I just remember seeing your videos too. I think it must have been, you're, you're only new in the game, like just on the social, on the TikTok and that, but yeah. it wasn't long and you blew up pretty quick, eh? And like, just like you said, war, war stories, this and that, but, and yeah. then, yeah, ever since, I know it's been the last, what, like a couple, you know, a year and a half, whatever it's been, I yep. just, all I see is just, yeah, just always about, even, even down to things like negative comments, brother, like telling yeah. people like, but I don't, don't give them any attention, just block them, like, you know yep. what I mean? Because I hear so many people on social media, obviously both of you and I, we're, we're both all on socials and that, 
a lot of people telling me like, man, they're so toxic, this and that. I'm like, bro, look at my feed. I don't follow no one toxic, bro. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? I just follow yeah. like, I just follow like positive quotes and all of that shit, bro. Yeah. It's only negative because you're following those people. <laughs> yeah, like you know, it's it's easy to switch, man. It's easy to yeah. switch, and like you said, if you, if you become you know somewhat of a social media personality, just block them, brother. Block them and carry yeah. on. Hundred percent. Yeah, if I can know if that's what I do, man. I'm exactly the same. You know, I think it's like in normal life, you know, like anything who we surround ourselves with and you know that what we let into our subconscious mind is that's the energy we got, you know, we've got to protect that energy, man. And that's bad energy. If it's bad energy, it can fuck off, you know. Like I won't hang around with some cunt that's gonna, hey, let's go steal a car or you know what I mean, let's get on yeah. the fucking drugs or you know what I mean? This cunt down the road said this, I'm going to go bash him. Like, fuck all that. Get out of my life. You know, I don't need that in my life. And it's the same with someone commenting in my shit. I'm just like, bro, I get a little fucking buzz when I see him. Like, I gotcha. You know what I mean? I fucking <laughs> delete, like, gotcha. You know what I mean? Yeah, you know I mean? yeah, 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 no, no, but I see you, brother. And as and you said the content you put out about it is it's, it's in a positive, you know, fashion too. Yeah. It's just showing people how to sort of, you know, how to protect the energy, brother, you know, and you, you know, yep. you, you, you 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 consume whatever you consume is you know like what you become you know what I mean so it's like exactly what those you healthy said, boundaries yeah the healthy boundaries that's what it is just putting up healthy boundaries you mm. know so and you I mean social media's got right? the block button man it's got it's a beautiful yeah, thing yeah that's there. it's fucking great man you know like rock the fuck yeah. out of it yeah hundred yeah, percent brother hundred percent brother I frash the man. block button bro I frash it you know <laughs> yeah the frash yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's the way old um. Going back though, brother, you you, you said a, a very important thing. I think at the start that you didn't have any like real male role models. Uh, so yeah. role models were out on the streets, brother. How important do you think role models are, like for young brothers, young sisters coming up? You know what I mean? Huge, huge man, huge. And now I've now I've stepped foot into that space. You know, like I hold space in the community online. You know, um, being a male role model for ones that. You know, haven't got a good role model, um, bro. I think it's massive. I think, um, you know, the government wants to go. Oh, you know, you can, we've got big pharma. Just come down, and fucking, you know, see a psychiatrist. Mm -hmm. They'll write a free, like a, a script for you, a diagnosis with a three letter diagnosis, and then you know, we'll go to the chemist and we'll dose you up and come back next month and pay some more money and we'll do it all again. You know, and like that's not fixing none of the fucking problems. Man. No way. <laughs> you know no what I mean? That's way, just, brother. It's just fucking the band aid, cuz. Hundred, I mean, yeah, wow. and so I um I think positive male role. Well, I shouldn't say male because I don't want to make this just about the boys, but um positive role models, role models in the community that have lived experience, so they're experts by experience, you know, helping other people heal, you know, like in a healthy environment that they know firsthand, you know, like people relate, you know, like they relate to people. We are what we eat, you know, so. If I if I um if I say to someone, listen, I know what it's like to get off drugs, and they're trying to get off drugs, bro, they're down. They're going to hear what I got to say, especially if they want to get off it. So I think it's huge. I think that's where the more 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 leaders, more people with good leadership skills, step up in their communities and even in their little communities, you know. And Chubbs, I don't want to make this about race at all. I mean, I've got brothers on all types, but do you know what I mean? You think like a Sudanese. You know, a good role model in the Sudanese community or Asian community or like yourself, the Islanders, you know, like, yeah. um, you know what I mean? They can stand up, mate. I'm just a white fella at the end of the day. I can do I can do my bit. But, yeah. you know, I'm sure some, you know, Arab kid that's uh, in, the, in the community is having a hard time running a mark, you know, an older Arab head that's been about it. You know, and knows what he's going through. He's, he's probably that that that, that young he's Arab that's probably going to listen to him before he listens to yeah. me. You know what I mean? More, more, yeah. more inclined to listen to like like they yeah. probably listen to you. But if they've got someone that they can look at and be like, oh, he looks like me. You know yep. what I mean? I get what you're saying. It's not. Yeah, yeah. So I think I think that's huge. I think that's huge yeah. in the making a difference in our communities. I think that it's massive, bro. You know? Yeah, I really do. I think. Um, and like I've been on a massive healing process myself, like you know, addressing my trauma, and I've been workshops and men's workshops and stuff. You know, I've done yeah. some real intense breath work, where you know well, I've got to release my breath, demons. What, what's all the my... breath work, bro? Because I hear about that, but I don't really understand. Is it is it really that important? Is it breath work? Oh right? yeah, it's fucking um, it changed my life, man. Um, so got some boys um that I hooked up with uh Watani from a men's movement, sussed them out, bro. Men's movement, they're doing um doing God's work, brother. It's crazy, man. Like fucking um 
full heel and dudes, you know. They um so what it is is, is, is is a lot of stuff. First, they they usually do a lot of exercises to address your ego because we've all got men as men, we've all got masks, you know. Mm-hmm. So they try to do these these work these little exercises in this workshop to to drop the mask. Because you know, whether we're in a gym or you know, down the fucking nightclub or Wherever it is, you know what I mean? It's football. You know, the boys always got their fucking chin out. You know what I mean? What's up? No holes in my game. It's just what you are. It's part of being a man. So, um, you know, I think these workshops, they do things like um, they'll just get us to address that. You know, there's little exercises. So uh, we feel comfortable in a, in that group because I suppose when we walked in there, we're all sort of, you get your chin out, look, head up, you know. Um, you know, fist forward. It's just how men are, you know. And when we left, we're all embracing each other. So that's they just got there's a process that goes through that, gets us oh, into that stage. Uh, and then we do some breath work. So the breath work is holotropic breath work. Okay. It's um, it's a, a natural release of DMT. So there's oh, chance yes. you can have visions and stuff like that. Like it's um, it's um really intense. It goes in uh, seven minute intervals with minute breaks in the middle, and you go deeper and deeper each time. And um gets to the point where you know like uh, i don't know if you know about wim hoff he's like the guy yeah 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 yeah, yeah, that's him yep so it sort of gets into that area because uh you you hold your breath in between these seven minute intervals and get to the stage where you don't have to breathe anymore like the coaches have got to tell you they've got to top you tap tap you on your shoulder go it's all right breathe you're okay you're safe breathe because you're just like so much in a trance you're in the zone you go holy rick yeah, you don't have sounds, to breathe. I could have held my breath, bro, till I was dead. Like, words. Sounds better than some of that dope you were peddling back in the days, eh? <laughs> that was some good <laughs> shit. Yeah. Look, you know. And, um, yeah, and then so you just go on a you – know, everybody's journey is different, but you just go on a bit of a journey, you know. And um, yeah. it's trippy, man. It was real trippy. It's heavy. It's um, very personal too, but so sometimes it's hard to talk about. Because um, a lot of the boys get emotional. I don't know if you've seen any content where lads are like laying out on yoga mats and there's like they're doing breath work and they're screaming and crying. And oh, shit. I've seen and someone they'll be hugging scre- each other. I think I've seen some or someone the screaming in the in in the bush in the water too. I think. Yeah, yeah, that's them. That's a, that's a men. They do the stuff like that. Yeah. Oh, beautiful yeah. work, what's man. It, what's um, it, what, what's it, what's it, what what Watani from a men's movement? Yeah, what the name of Wanga? Yeah, that's him. Yeah, no, cool. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I mean, brother. So, you, what you recommend there? Oh, I mean, totally recommend to, it. Like, Help to, me, to all man. the boys out there. Hundred percent, like that. That and that goes back to what we we're saying about the medication that the scripts they'll write you and stuff like yeah. that. Like this is some holistic healing. You know what I mean? Some like real spiritual mm. healing. It's unpacking that trauma. I mean, we all got demons, and it's it's getting rid of that shit that we we you know stack up a visible backpack with this trauma yeah. along the way. And um, yeah, it's unpacking that trauma, bro. It's um really good. That uh, helped me in my journey. How did, how did you link with him, brother? Just on socials or socials? Yeah, bro. Socials. They give me an invite, and I've been a few times now. I love it, man. Um, we've become quite good friends, and yeah, man. They just love their work, man. I, I I think it's just appeals to me. They're just healing motherfuckers, you know, like proper. Um, yeah. It's fucking crazy to watch, man. And so many boys are just shedding so many fucking so much baggage you know so much of the, the, the ugly stuff we fucking store up along the way it might be a shit bring up you know stuff that happened to yep. family break up the missus maybe you haven't seen the kid whatever all that sort of stuff you know just the stuff that um men deal with and i suppose you know as we know i don't know if you sure you know shubs that the suicide rate's really high for men you know and this yeah, is the sort huge, of- huge for men huge for men i don't know if you know much about like uh new zealand but we have like the highest youth suicide rate in the world, like for the developed world, New Zealand. There like I know, yeah. like, there's like twenty, there's like twenty people that were my age growing up that all killed, killed themselves, brother. Or they did yeah. like over time yeah. too. That's my age, like let alone other other ages and whatever. Yeah. Crazy, you know what I mean? That, yeah. That's around like just our little neighborhoods, brother. So yeah, yeah um, suicide's big, and, and I've been, I've been there a couple of times, brother. Try to you know. Try to do yeah. try to do the old rope up and then uh, even try to play Russian roulette with myself one time, but then you know you start yeah. clicking and then all of a sudden, oh, the next one's probably going to be a bullet. Oh, start thinking about it, but obviously yeah. uh, miracles or whatever still here, just like yourself. Right. I know you got stories like that as well. Um, yeah, yeah, that's super cool. cool. That's super cool. You can speak about that, man, because I think it's we got to feel to heal, you know, don't we? So like, and that's the process, mm. and I, I love that, man. There's those dark times that if we can talk about it, help others, you know. 
Um, so yeah, man, yeah. you know the pain. You know the pain like everybody else. There's so many men going through it. So I think it's really cool for you know men to help men heal in a mm. in a healthy environment. You know, like in, in an environment where you know no one's getting hurt, especially not themselves. You know what I mean? Like too many men are hurting themselves. You know, and 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 then it, if they don't hurt themselves, then they're hurting their loved ones in the usually in the home. You know. So yeah. you know, for 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 Watani and his 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 um his business to be helping men unpack that shit and go back and have a, a and live in a healthy home where you know that men are the core of the home. You know they're the they're the fucking foundation of the home. You know, so if they're mm. healed and they then they're not broken, then you got a happy home, man. You got good kids, kids growing up, good environment. The missus is happy; she's not getting smacked around. All the rest of that, like yeah. um, it's it's really good. I love his work so. I really agree with her. I think look into, you know, um, trauma healing and holistic healing. If anybody's got any dark demons, man, it's a good way. And, like, bro, it's not about how hard of a man you are because I know Watani, Amend and that, the boys there, I know they've done work over in New Zealand with, like, full yep. proper gang members, like groups of gangs, like a full, you know, like 10 deep full gang members and that lay down and mm. they all start crying. They've all got demons to release too, you know what I mean? So, like... Yeah, man. Like you know, it doesn't matter how hard of a man you are. We can all, when you face your demons, I think it's one of the biggest, biggest, show, like uh, biggest shows of courage. You know, it really shows that mm. you know you got you got fucking kahunas, man. Yeah, yeah. Did you, you know, doing this work? Did you find some things out that you were like, oh, I didn't even know I was carrying that still or carrying that at all? Like yeah, yeah. The, of course. The men boys. Yeah, hundred percent, bro. I had to address um, adjust my, had to address my shame and guilt. You know. I had to address that, you know, I had a lot of shame and guilt from, um, you know, fucking a lot of things that had happened, you know, growing up and um, and then forgive myself for them, you know. I had to forgive myself for them, you know. It's the only way to move on, you know. So, um, yeah, man, and, and to say them things out loud, dude, this is, I'm 42, man, you know what I mean? There's some things I've never said out loud, bro, like mm. they're my dirty, dark secrets, you know what I mean? But to say them out loud and to, to admit that, I, you know, I have guilt and shame for them, but mm. then to also like you know we write a letter to forgiveness for ourselves to ourselves and then burn that letter, like that shit's deep, man. You know what I mean? Like, Ooh. yeah, you know, powerful, heavy, powerful, yeah, powerful, very powerful, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hey, brother, take us back to the to that young buck days. What was your first crime that like, you committed, or the if you can yep. remember it? Yeah. Um. So I started off um a little punk, just like you know before high school just smashing windows in the area and yeah. banded houses and just little yeah. shit man uh punching on you know so I'm, I'm a little guy so i've got that small man syndrome you know what i mean always, yeah, yeah, always wouldn't cool. have a crack you know <laughs> and um <laughs> yeah and they fucking... estimate me you bastard hey. <laughs> yeah, that one and that and um yeah bro so you know um from there i by the time i was in high school you know we were proper doing like you know proper shop birds on the way to doing shopbergs was like um, fleecing cars, you know, uh, breaking into sheds. Then we started doing housebergs, like, ag you know, just breaking enters, not agbergs, you know, just breaking mm -hmm. enters. And then, you know, by the time I was in high school, man, um, I was getting locked up. Like, I went to juvie and shit. I was getting locked up at juvie for doing, like, um, smashing grabs. But then we, like, yeah. proceeded on from smashing grabs to, like, uh, going into, like, through the roof into the storerooms oh, yeah, yeah. and, and bypassing the alarms then, you know what I mean? So we'd get yeah, past the alarms, in. shimmy everything out through the storeroom. We're doing them ones and that um, pretty standard young cunt shit, you know? And then um, when I come back from juvie, I, I approach the older guys and fuck, I thought, fuck this burger and shit because the jacks were always catching me for stealing shit, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I was a little boy, can't run around with my mates who were robbing shit. And um, they knew at MO, man. That we thought we were organised, but it wasn't hard to find us with some stolen goods, you know what I mean? Behind our mum, behind mum's shed, or down the creek, or at some fucking abandoned house, we were always getting fucked and pinched. And I thought, fucking yeah, let's. I'll get into moving and moving and shaking. So I fucking approached the older guys. At the same time, they sort of approached me. It was a given. I was being about fifteen, and um, yeah, started just fucking picking up packages and moving that shit, and had a tick list and taking back their money, the usual scenario. You know what I mean? Getting a little, getting mm -hmm. by and. Yeah, man, I fucking, I quit everything at about 18 because I was still, I was a little young, but smoking cones and popping eckies and shit. When I was about 18, I thought, fucking, man, I really got to switch on here. Like I've fucking taken, it was, I chose to be a fucking career criminal and I was going to take it serious. So I quit everything. Yeah. So um, I just, I was that sober guy. I was showing up selling, selling gear. 
um, sober. And uh, that what that did was just then I just leveled up. You know what I mean? As you do, yeah, of course, don't of get course. high on supply. It all gets serious real quick. Make it serious money, and the more money you make, the more you pick up, and bigger connects come along, and bigger customer, you know, moving more to different sides customers all over the joint. And yeah, man, uh, I was about 24, 25. I caught a big pinch. So, uh, so I was selling to a uh, bouncer and yep. um, I was supplying a bouncer in the club and he was supplying the club. It wasn't my area. It was another area. So mm. I was sort of, uh, you know, stepping in on someone else's area. And I didn't know, like when you move out of your area, you know, it's uh, like you can keep tabs, like you, localism, that tr tribalism, you know what I mean? It's, people grow up in their own area. You know what's in your back door, you know? You know what's in your backyard sort of thing. Um, I didn't have that because I was, I was blind because I was moving to another area. So he was selling to two undercovers, uh, two undercover police officers, and they were acting like, you know, they had the chicks with the lollipops and, uh, you know, yeah, yeah, carrying yeah, yeah, on yeah. like they're in the party scene. But they were yeah. actually like wearing like listening devices and shit. And uh, they got 700 phone intercepts. So phone, they'll tap the phone calls and they end up over a few weeks, they got um, 1,100 grams of speed, which is 100 grams, just over a kilo. Yeah. And then um, 7,000 green Mitsubishi's ecstasy tablets. Ooh, so icky. fucking, um, yeah, I was fucking, I was in a bit of shit there. There was no getting out of that. And um, I got a five with a three for that. So I got five on the, on the top with a minimum yep. of three years. Yeah. That was my early 20s. Yep. So, so did you do the did you do the full five or did you no nah, no nah, I got it good good behavior got it out got me two years yeah. bro yeah yeah yeah, yeah I, I, I punched on I punched, was punching on through the system and fucking make yeah. trouble miss my missus was selling gear and shit like she's coming and giving it to me you know and I was selling it giving her the money the usual shit yeah and yeah, yeah. um fucking when I got to about about twelve months left um I ended up I was at Barwon which is in Melbourne it's our maximum security most notorious prison. yeah yeah. It's got all the lifers down there and that. And I ended up there because I've been fucking tipped from this prison and from running a racket or punching on or fucking, you know, yeah. jumping on some cunt's head or fucking, fucking having a crack at the screws and all the usual shit, thinking yeah. I was cool and fucking, you know, I was bigger than I was. And I ended up at Barwon with all the big boys and I was like, oh, yeah, fucking fair enough. So I sort of slowed down a little bit because you get your head cut off there for fucking carrying on. So, you know, I was yeah. in the, with the big boys now and – this the uh, parole board ended up saying, what the fuck are you doing up here, man? Like, you know, you want to go home. You need to fucking start behaving yourself. You know, we want, we want to get you to fucking uh, open camp before you go home. Like, well, you're at you're max. You started off at medium. Now you're at maximum. And you've done slot time, this and that. You've had you know, uh, allegations for drug trafficking, allegations for violence. Like, you are you even learning your lessons? So um, mm. I had to pull my head in. So for the last 12 months, I thought, fucking all right, I better pull my head in here. So I started jumping through hoops and done some courses and yeah, did the right thing, ended up getting my B rating. And then from there, got a C rating my last six weeks. So I ended up at open camp for the last six weeks before my parole. And I got my Dude. earliest, yeah, got my earliest and that, yeah. Hey, that's on, brother. When you were in there, uh, did, you have a, did you have a snake or something in, inside? Did you yeah. find a snake? <laughs> Yeah, everybody loves the snake story. Yeah, bro, yeah but that's all the snake story, cousin. Yeah, that, that was um, that was the next sentence actually. That was a, oh, that was, was it? Another sentence. Yeah, that was that. Oh, sentence another one. Drug trafficking. That was for oh, a fight. Okay. Yeah, I'll get back. But um, yeah, I fucking I had a snake, bro. Fucking, I found a brown How snake, you... oh, a baby where? brown snake. Yeah, I found a baby brown snake. So in the yard, I found a brown snake. Oh, okay. Fucking, yeah, we in the garden. There was a garden area, and I found it in there. And so I fucking took it home and, um, yeah, bro, I fucking, <laughs> uh, I, I kept it in a Tupperware container Yeah. and uh, it, was, it was my little pet, man. Like I've always been sort of like where we come from, you know, snakes and yeah, lizards. Bush. And, yeah, every bush. Yeah, I grew up riding dirt there. bikes and playing, climbing trees and I'm a bit of a boy boy, yeah. you know? And, yeah. um, so fucking, you know, catching a snake was not the city slickers. They're going, what the fuck's wrong with you, mate? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> So I'm going, he's all right. He's my little friend. And there was a, they, down where we were, they had like, um, they're like in, integration programs. It's sort of like responsibility programs where they give like lifers, they give them like they'll go, they'll get into medium. And these people are doing, you know, 15, 20, 20 years, 30 years, whatever. And they're getting back out to the community, they're getting older. And they'll give them like a goldfish, a bird, yeah. a cat. And they're like, it's a program where they sort of like have to be responsible for something, care for oh, it. Yeah. 
and then teaches them sort of uh, all these fucking skills they need to get back in the community with. There probably needs to be more of that shit, really, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. But um, and so you well, were, thought, you were learning yours with your own pit. <laughs> yeah, bro. You know what I mean? So I got myself a snake and and fuck out my own program running. And um, yeah. how long did you have yeah, for? Probably about three or four months. It's great. Oh, was, true. Was, That's a while. Yeah, yeah I was going it. up to the, I was going up to the Asians, and uh, they had they were catching frogs because we had some ponds there. So they were yep. catching frogs. And then they had, a, they had a tub of frogs and they were feeding the frogs like flies. They catch flies with their, the bags on their hands and then they'd feed the frogs. And they were fatting the frogs up in the Asian lodge so they could fucking make a, eventually make a frog stew, you know? That's what they yeah. do. So I'd go up for pouch and say, can I get some frogs off you, some baby frogs for my snake and that, you know? So I was yeah. feeding the frogs and that, yeah. And, um, <laughs> and then anyway, fucking the screws come in one day and they said to me, they go fucking uh, – Cell search. Did anything you want to declare in the cell? And I thought, usually I'd say, fuck, mate, whatever you find, it's not mine. But fuck, yeah. I thought if they open that container and get bit Boom. by a brown snake, I'm fucked. You're gone. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm you're gone. gone. So um, yeah, I said, yeah, I've got a, I've got my pets under my bed. Said, what do you got, mate? You know what I mean? What pet? I said, it's my pet snake. I said, of course you got a pet snake. What sort of snake you got? I said, a brown snake. And they're laughing, thinking I'm being fucking funny or cheeky or something. Anyway, they pull the cupware container out. And I'm standing at the door, and they open the lid. Both of them, fucking Jesus! They go, "What the fuck are you doing with that name?" Fucking, they <laughs> thought, yeah, they thought it was a bit of a big deal. And then I didn't know, but it's um to to capture a native animal. It's a federal charge. You're not allowed oh. to have a native animal in captivity. You're not allowed to just take oh, it. Shit. Like, yeah, it's a federal oh, charge. Shit. So. Then they started, the news got involved and the radio and all this fucking stuff got real fucking serious. And um, the only thing, the way I got through the breaks was uh, because I declared it, you know, so I said, and I said, well, fuck, the reason why I fucking told you is it was there because I didn't want you to get bitten, you know what I mean? Because if you got bitten, I'm fucked, you know? So yeah. that sort of lightened the load for me. Um, I told, or if you want to call it dry snitched myself, you know, I told them what yeah, was there yeah, when yeah, they were yeah. going about before. They were going to find it anyway. It was just under my bed in a Tupperware container that I got from the cottage. So they're always going to find it. But, um, yeah, because I'd let them know it was there, that sort of lightened the load. They didn't fucking – didn't take me to the cleaners. But, yeah, man, if I, you can Google it. Like, you just Google um, Victorian prisoner caught with fucking poisonous snake and, yeah, that's that's the write-up. I come straight up, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. that's dope, brother. So you're also into, like, being a country where you didn't mind playing with the old spiders and that is a bit of a spider story yeah. out there as well, bro. <laughs> 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 Insects and that, yeah, bro. Yeah, I fucking I bred some baby redbacks. You bred so, them? Um, How I you bred them? I got a male and a female, and yeah. uh, the the female has the red stripe. The male doesn't. So, and I put them in the container oh. together, and it had a little oh. ecosystem. Had little leaves and fucking sticks, and they had their webs in there and that. And yeah. I didn't know they were gonna fucking breed, but uh, ended. Yeah, she ended up fucking because she had a real fat end on ass end on her. And yep. she ended up fucking one morning. I woke up and she shrunk that her ass into a tiny. Really, yep. like she's done heaps of cardio in the night or something. Like, What's <laughs> what the fuck's going on here? The BBL. And anyway, I see, in, yeah, I see in the corners there's this fucking egg, little white sack. I'm like, fuck, man, I might be onto something here. Yeah. And um, yeah, man, a while later, man, the egg cracked and fucking all these baby little redbacks come out of it, man. And fucking, <laughs> I was fucking stoked. I was like, yes, I fucking bred baby redbacks. I was so yeah. impressed with myself. And the boys that I lived with, we lived in a little self-contained unit. There was four of us, so there's three other lads. There was me. Who's this, brother? Three. What, what, what prison uh, are you at at the time? This was at Fulham. Okay. Yeah, yeah. In, I think it would have been about 2015. Yeah. Yeah, Fulham yeah. 2015. It's in Sale. It's yeah. in the country up there. Yeah, it's a medium medium uh prison but it's also got it's got a c rating section but it's okay. still behind a fence so it's not open camp open camp yeah. c ratings are usually like um they've got like no fence at all but this is like behind a fence it's behind a big fuck off fence but um where there's medium prisoners but uh it's they've got a little section c rating so in that section there you can if you go jump through the hoops and behave yourself you can get down this is just before i got out this is as i was mm. like and i've been out about seven years now so, yeah, it was like I got out from there and sort of got to – like to, got, tried to get a, a straight life going on, and that's where yeah. the story intertwines with. I sort of fell off and become a drug addict, but and now here I am now. But, um, yeah, fucking I um, 
I was in, so we're in a four, uh, uh, four man contained unit where we can cook for ourselves and stuff. Yeah. And, um, I walked in, uh, walked in the house and I'd always had like snakes and spiders and lizards always in my room, little containers and stuff, little ecosystems. And I walked in and the boys were all sort of in a lounge room. And these are good lads. I all sort of lived with them and that. We were all good boys yeah. and that we run amok and they're like fucking all, we need to have a chat. Said, what the fuck's your problems? You know, <laughs> what have I done? <laughs> mm. I abide by the rules. Yeah. And, um, yeah, and they fucking said, mate, enough's enough. I said, what do you mean? They said, those fucking baby redbacks have got to go. Mate, the, <laughs> the, the house had turned into arachnophobia fucking seven. The boys and shit, they had enough. They didn't want a bar of it, mate. They thought it's fucking silly. They're saying the fucking redbacks are going to cr- climb out the air holes and that, you know? I'm like, they're oh, fine, true. you know? Because they had holes in there. I'm going, we're all right, mate. Don't stress. You know? They're going, mate, there's three of us. There's one of you, and we're not going to sleep till those things are gone. My fucking yeah. cunts, mate, you know? So it got serious. <laughs> I was dirty, man. Like, I, I ended really? up flushing them. I ended up flushing yeah. the baby red bags not, down the not, toilet. Not willingly. Not willingly. Oh, I was fucking, yeah. I wasn't happy about it, man. I swear, I wanted, I wanted to stab the cunts the next few weeks and you know, I'll get him in the middle of the night. I did it, but that's how yeah. I felt about it, you know, because those baby yeah. red bags were, every, they were everything to me, man. I love that yeah. fucking little family. But, I can um, imagine, brother, when your freedom's not, you don't have your freedom yet, and all of that stuff, and you know you've 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 put a put a male and a female together, and you've you cultivated yeah. this environment for them to create these little babies. Time, there's and, some time like, and effort put into that, you know. <laughs> yeah, 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 I feel you, brother. Yeah. yeah. So the boys didn't they didn't like the baby redbacks. They, I think they got to be fucking scared, you know. They feel this enough's enough. So, but yeah, yeah. had to get rid of them. <laughs> you got you got any pits now, brother? Like any pit yeah, redbacks, man, pit snakes, or? Oh, no, yeah, no, oh, oh you got a oh you got a normal pit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got a I've got a little staffy now. Got a little staffy. Is that a staffy? Um, English or M staff? M staff blue. Yeah, she's grouse. Yeah, she's Be- beautiful her. nature, eh? Don't you reckon they yeah, have beautiful the natures? Best. A lot of those. Yeah, ah, they're cool. she's grouse, man. She's like yeah. she's my best mate. She's almost like my therapy dog, man, because she taught me to love. She's got such a big heart, you know. She's mm. got such a big heart, big softy, you know. So. It's good. What's I need something brother? like that in my life, you know. Yeah, sort of. What's, what's your name, brother? Bonnie. 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 Yeah, the Bonnie. Bonnie. Let's yeah, Bonnie. go. Bonnie. Was like Bonnie and Clyde, eh? Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, Let's yeah. go. How did you? How did you get Bonnie? Just like from a, from a, a dog dealer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, bro. Pretty much a mate of a mate was um, yeah, he had a fucking um, had some litters and that. And I thought I'll get myself a dog. And man, we've been through thick and thin. She she was there the whole time. I was fucking fucked out on drugs. Oh, and true. I, yeah, yeah, she was body. by my side. And, bro, they're just loyal. You know what I mean? Just stick by her. Hundred. Doesn't matter how Hundred. bad of a day it is, man. Like, she just wanted to, as long as she's sitting next to me, she's happy. Like, you can't find loyalty like that anywhere. But, nah, um, even dogs, brother, like, you know, some of the shittest humans, brother, like, uh, even the shittest humans to their dogs and their dogs still loves them, brother. It's like, it's what crazy, the fuck, they, Yeah, Crazy, brother. It's crazy. It's crazy, yeah. man. Like, they don't even deserve the dog, brother. But, you 100%. Know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got a big soft spot now for animals, you know. I do. Uh, yeah, not much of a cat person. What about you? You got some? Oh, the only cat I like is the meow. No, 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 not that one. <laughs> yes, <laughs> no, no, I don't like TikTok. that. I don't... Yeah, <laughs> no, I don't like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, those cats go right to the lay on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. The only, no, no, not. I'm not really a cat person. I, I say that though, but then. Like my baby mama, she's had two cats like her parents have. Like she had one that was her like childhood one, but it's gone. There's another one that I, you know, and I don't know. I, I used to I'll pet them, brother, but growing up I didn't really like cats, eh? But uh yeah, more yeah. a dog person. And yeah. uh, you know, yeah, dogs all day. Like I had a lot of dogs, you know, growing up. Have you got a dog? Uh, no, nah, not at the moment, brother. Not at the moment, brother. Just three yeah. kids. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're, they're, that's hectic enough, brother. Enough. <laughs> you got any you got any kids? None, bro. Nah, nah, my pull, out, my pull out game is strong, man. I Must fucking, be, uh, brother. Hey, yeah, yeah, brother. yeah, yeah. The strong, no misses, no kids, no misses, no, no kids. Nah. Are you in the mark? Are you like, well, are you open or nah? Like, not nah, really bro, funny. I think I'm on this journey of fucking finding myself, you know what I mean? So, yeah, because surely, but, surely there's gonna be some aunties in the DMs, like, hey, guys, how are we oh. going? Hey? <laughs> Plenty, <laughs> plenty, plenty. <laughs> yeah, hey, must hope. be plenty wanting a bit of hope, hope cartel in them. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> They're looking for some hope. Yeah, 100%, yeah, 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 100%, hope. yeah, yeah nah. oh, well, So you just think what? Just for now, I'm all right. Like, yeah, I just I think like I'm just about to get my license and stuff. Like you know, get a car. I've got a nice little plaid pad on that. Like you know, I've got a nice little yeah. place of streaming. Are you room, just living like, alone? 
Yeah, yeah living just... alone. So it took me a while. Like I've been sober just over two years. And when yeah. I started this journey, like of, of the sobriety journey, you know, documenting and you know, building a brand and social media, I man, I had the clothes on my back. That was it, you know. Yeah. Now I've yeah. got a beautiful little place, you know, um, a registered business, you know, ship merchandise, stream, monetize. You're doing it all out of your are you doing it all out of your out of your house? Yeah, 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 like your, yeah, your, yeah, your, your, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. 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 Merchandise is I've got an office at my mum's, the back room. Yeah, yeah, so we do that it. out of mum's because there's a bit more room there. So it's a yeah. family thing. But um, yeah, man. Yeah, that's yeah, cool too. My, yeah, keeping the family streaming room. Yeah, keeping in the family. Yeah, got my streaming room, and you know, so like now, probably the only thing that's, that's different from me and everybody else that's normal in the community would be a car and a license as soon as i've got a car and a license bro i'm on i pay my taxes i pay my fucking bills you know what i mean i don't yeah. break the fucking law i've got yeah. I've, I'm my own, i work for myself you know which is grouse i'm my own boss my own hours i work from yeah. home but yeah man like just all that i don't think and and still i've got so far to go you know, i really want to mm. really run the ball up with this message i'm pushing and uh yeah. and, and build my brand and you know, keep getting followers and views and because that's more, more me the message is going further and further. And so as yeah. I'm doing all that, I just don't know if I've got room for a girl, bro. You know what I mean? Like, oh. it just, it seems like a bit of a distraction. You know what I mean? Like, you know, well, next can minute be, I fall brother. in love. Next minute no, I fall in love. Go. And um, like today, so I got up today, you know, um, I had to get back to some messages, had to do a lot of few phone calls. I ended up doing some yep. content, had some yep. lunch, fucking bang them on here. By the time I finish yeah. on here, I'll probably get back some more phone call messages, jazz up some tea, maybe take my dog for a walk, then I'm going to stream the rest of the night. That's my day yeah. done, man. Like, I don't know how I'll fucking I'll fit a girl in there. She's, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah, you yeah, know? Yeah. yeah. Maybe she can fit in while you're streaming. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Under the desk. <laughs> no, no, no. Fair enough, brother. And yeah. yes, you know, like, you know, because you're right. Like, and, and they take it, like, uh, you know, the wrong way, ladies, but you know, it can be a distraction, especially if you're on a mission. You know what I mean? Yeah. If you're on a mission, it's just, that's just exactly trying to is, like, bro. you know, and that's it, brother. And I'm just like, you know, I'm just like you, brother, just focused on this podcast, brother. And that's all I'm yeah. doing, brother. Like, I'm, you know, I want to get back into streaming and that a little bit as well, but I just want to make this as, 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 as dope as possible. But it's been like a five year vision for me. So I, I get what you're saying, brother. Like, any other distractions, brother, like, you know, even not that kids are distractions like you got to have your children but like you know what i mean like if you if you are in a place where you you don't have children or or, or a missus or something and and you got yeah. a vision but chase that go hard man you know what yeah, i mean yeah yeah fucking oath. and yeah. how long since you've streamed uh or like since i used like when i used to stream yeah Oh, like I've jumped on like for an hour here and there, like at a, maybe one day or like every couple of weeks. But since yep. I was consistently pushing ranks, but it's been like six months, I think. Okay. Maybe about six months. I just made the decision to like, if I'm going to do this podcast, to just give it my all, you know what I mean? And yeah. inside of that, like, because, you know, you do the editing, cutting up clips, like I'm trying yep. to, like, you know, get and uh, even just like the replying, like you say, messages, trying to organize like, you know who, who's who's going to come on all of that kind of stuff um you know planning out like concepts because the, the podcast i'm doing mind the mic it's not just that um you know like usually it's like, oh this is my podcast come and talk but yeah i'm doing like multiple different shows so i'm a big rugby league fan or big sports fan but rugby okay. league's huge you know so yep. we're we'll doing like a review and preview show tonight we do every wednesday what a couple with a, with a bro of mine and my sister we talk about football and then we we're watching our favorite or my favorite team mine and the bro's favorite team we, we watch we stream the games live so as well so we do that and it's all it's all on the podcast so that's one show and then yep. the sister and i do like uh we talk about trending topics every sunday we drop an yep. episode about either trending topics or just stuff that's been on our mind and maybe quotes that because she loves quotes so we do that and we just do that consistently every sunday night um another brother of mine we we're fathers and you know around the same age and both polys both, both islanders there yep. so we talk about sort of those those struggles and that so that's a show we drop yeah. on mondays and then i've just been interviewing people as well brother so i don't really have the time again to yep. like for anything full else time, really. huh? full time yeah, yeah, yeah brother bro. but like you know i just i just want to i just want to 
see how, how far I can take it, brother, and see how many yeah. dope conversations I can have with dope people like yourself. And hopefully yeah. some youth, some up and coming people, even some um some older people can take stuff from what we're talking about, brother. You know what I mean? And yeah. take some hope. Take some hope, yeah, brother. You know, hope. From, Everybody needs yeah. a bit of hope, don't they? You know? Yeah, yeah. yeah that's it, brother. So that's my thoughts. Like, because growing up, just like you said, brother, I didn't have fucking role models, brother. It was terrible. You know what I mean? Ter- yeah. Terrible, really. Like, uh, yeah. All the role, model, role models that I did ha- have that would have been good weren't really around a lot. Like, always working and stuff, you know what I mean? You know, so you couldn't really. Okay. So I think about like a lot of it was all, you know, same brother, like my, all my uncles and a lot of gangsters and, you know, just up to yep. no good brother, you know, drugs, yep. alcohol, all that stuff, violence. So the options were you, you go that way or you try and become an all black, which is very minute amount of people that become an yeah. all black. So like, yeah. there's not really like, that's why I look at with this, with the streaming and uh, the podcast, podcast thing, and that, we, we yeah. can show them a different, uh, open a different door, brother, and show them maybe, maybe they want to do this one day. You know what I mean? But if you that's super like, cool, you know, isn't it? That's, that's yeah. so cool. Yeah, hundred percent. It's like you said about uh, not making it about race, but if like a, an islander, young young buck looks up and sees an islander that's gone through it as well, or or yep. Arab or or Aussie, they're more likely to probably listen to that person than someone that's of a different ethnicity. Not that you know, not that we are no are no human beings, but I get what you're saying because yeah, when you yeah, see yeah, someone yeah. do something that you that that looks like you, you're like, oh, I can do that too. It's more relatable, right? Yeah. So that's yeah. what I feel like doing this, brother. So. And then I'm talking every like I'm talking to rugby players, so, you know, former you know, rugby league players. I'll talk to AFL. I don't even know AFL, but uh, but I'll talk to them if they want to talk. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. just have a conversation because we all got stories. But more around, uh, you know, everyone's like, if they if you're a sports star or something, all they want to know is about the football. I want to know about the human brother. You know what I mean? Just like, yeah, that's why I asked you, like, you know, about, that's why I asked you questions outside of just the prison life and that, because, yeah, yeah. that's fine and dandy. That's how you've, you know, built your platform, but you're more than that. You know what I mean? Yeah, fucking know? 100%. And it's super cool, man, that the fact that we can do this with the, what we have today is the internet, man. Like, that's fucking yeah. amazing, you know? Like, yeah. our parents and, our, you know, like you said, your uncles and all that, so they didn't have the chance to step away and put their head on the internet or, you know, podcasting or streaming or, you know, we no. can ev- everybody can build a brand online now. Like, you're crazy not to build a personal brand online, you know what I mean? Like, it's just where we are, man. Like, you know, branding's huge, man, and it doesn't matter if fucking – you know what I mean? You fucking cat shat on the floor and you're thinking about selling the cunt. If you post about that, there's people that are going to resonate with yeah. you. Yeah, you know 100%. I mean? brother. Yeah, the next minute people. That, yeah. That's, um, yeah, yeah, one yeah. of my boys, bro. One of my boys, uh, like a couple of years ago, and like I was saying that we we're talking about all of this stuff because, like I said, this has been like the, the podcast itself has been like a five year, uh, you know, plan in mind, you know what I mean? And building the. Yep. The infrastructure just in my mind and stuff and how how and researching and all of this kind of stuff but yep. uh, even my um one of my boys i said to him like back in the days because he's like oh i want to make content i was like he's like but i don't know what it, i was like well what do you do every day like what can you do just like the news right the news is watched by a lot of especially older people not so much our, yeah. our generations but yep. older people because but it's not even just because it's news it's because it's consistently on at the same time every day i was like if you can create something that's consistent like you know yep. and then People will, right. people will come, man. You know, consistency, you know, yeah. will be there. You know, will bring the will bring the masses because you'll con- they'll know every day the bro's gonna be there. I'll come at that time or whatever 100. it is, or every That's, week. You know, like yeah. like a like a show that people watch weekly. Like they, they yeah. know on Monday night, blah blah blah, it's gonna be on at that time. So I yeah. said to him, and he goes, "Oh, the only thing I really do every day consistent is like picking up dog shit because I got five dogs." I was like. Well, why don't you just do it and talk, oh, talk yeah, about that's things that's on your mind? So he started doing it, and then yeah. and then he was doing like some people start like he started liking it, and, and then one of the like one of the <laughs> sisters that was in the crew goes, "Oh, that's disgusting!" And then he got disheartened and stopped. But like, oh, bro, he could have been. I, I told, I said to him, bro, you could be selling like the flashiest poo scoopers out there right <laughs> yeah, now, bro. That's it. Like, it. That's exactly what it is. I love it. And because what we all, people, every every second house has got to pick up dog shit. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, got a dog, literally. You got to pick it does. up, man. No one likes <laughs> doing it. You know what I mean? So, yeah. It's all different styles of dog shit. You got the hard ones, the soft ones, you know, the, the <laughs> ones that so you scoop up easy, easy as. So yeah, 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 bro, like fucking oath, you know. Yeah. But I, but I was talking to him about it, and like you know, because then because because he liked talking about like uh, stuff that was going on in the world. I was like, why don't you just yep. like the, the poo scooping is just what you do, but talk and like that's what you know having the conversation. Yeah. Like yeah. that's why people come for you know what I mean. That's just and then he was like, oh yeah, but then he got disheartened because one of the sisters was like, oh that's disgusting, and he <sighs> never did it again, bro. I was yeah, like, oh, don't do that. Fuck it, no. but. 
but that's the thing too i think and you could speak about it brother to people out there that are trying to chase their dreams on social media like you say anyone can do it but just like life not everyone's built to do it brother not everyone's built to to take the criticism yeah. and that like can you speak on that uh how you yeah, push through sure. with your business and everything you're trying to do yep like the spite think, all um, of the haters and all of that for sure man fucking that's um something i'm you know passionate about is um you know the whole showing up and i think I think showing up and posting is like that's 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 half the battle. Do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? So many people don't post because they're worried about, you know, like we said about building a brand. Anybody can build a brand off anything, you know. So showing up and posting and, and building a brand, like you know, half the battle is just pressing that post button. And that's that's something that I just did, man. Like, and I've done it for the last two years plus. It's just fucking recorded and posted, recorded and posted. Mm. Man, I look back at some of my earlier shit, and it is so fucking cringe, man. Like, <laughs> it is fucking ugly as you know what I mean. Like me cutting laps, I'm half, I'm fucking still half cooked off the streets, just fresh off a drug habit, cutting laps at fucking air raiding at the phone, like I'm some fucking fucking hard cunt. <laughs> oh, even I would have fucking trolled me back then. You know, <laughs> shut up, cunt, you know? But, um, bro, I still had the balls to do it, you know? And paying, yeah. ended up paying off in the end. Like, I just kept posting, kept posting, kept posting, kept posting. I mean, they say any attentions, negative attention is still attention, you know? So, and it, it kept me relevant, man. Like, all them comments and all them fucking, you know, everybody was saying, look at this dickhead fucking rah, rah. Mate, yeah. it all kept me in the algorithm. It kept me relevant. Yeah. And so, but today, man, I can honestly say I post proper content. Like today, my shit's not yeah. cringe. I look at my shit now. I'm, a, I'm actually a content creator. And I, so, I enjoy know, it, brother, even those videos when you're like, the bros are trying to pull up on you. Like, let's go do the, you're still going to do a little this and that. And you're like, no, 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 fuck that. And then the bros, they know the bros fucking gone. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, that yeah, was, yeah. That those was, videos that, are cool, man. Yeah, that video actually went well the other day. That was a good one. It's fucking got nearly all over collective. I think it's nearly 2 million views. So that's yeah, good. That's it's going. Great. It's only about three or four days old. That video. That was a good video. That one. And that was just a minute. That woke up in the morning. Just thought of a fucking like an idea. And then yeah. first I was just going to do it like in house with no vehicle. And yeah. then my brother rocked up. He goes, "Why don't we use the car?" And I was like, "Yeah." And then got my mate to ring in on the phone. So it sounded like you know he was and he yeah, did yeah, a really legit. good job on the phone. You know, yeah, no, that was good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it worked out well. Good. Did well. Had it all. But um, yeah. Back onto the. There's always going to be comment comments. You know. There's always going to be people, and Shubs, man, I'll be honest, man, like a fucking, you know, from from checking out profiles that air raid or carry on in the comments, I always have a look before I delete them and then yeah. fuck them off, bro. So many of them, and like too many, it's like there's, like, I swear, 70, 80% of these fucking profiles that have a crack at me, they've got fucking kids in the fucking, they're like they're sitting there, the profile pictures them with a child. Or, you know, they're like, you know, the, the missus and the kids, you know, Christmas fucking photo and shit. I'm like, these kinds of parents, man. Like, these people are fucking parents, you know what I mean? Air raiding as an adult on someone's content because they don't like them. It's like, bro, it has to go back to some bullied at school type shit. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you know, like, has to, yeah, man. It's like crazy how many parents are actually you know carrying what I reckon on, it on is? social media, you know? You know what I reckon it is too, brother? I reckon it's not only that. A lot of times when, if you get in those situations where it is like, the the family or the the what they would say the American dream right you have a family you yep. have a house yep. all of that stuff yep. um which is just a lie that the banks created to to sell you money to fucking buy yep. a house so, so they can sell you money but all of that stuff is like for for me when I see it, I think it's they never chased their dreams brother they never they never had a yep. crack you know what I mean it's they probably it's, it's cool shit but also probably they had a yep. dream and then their mum told them or their dad told them that's stupid or their friends okay. and no one backed them bruh you know what I mean that's what I think it is. And, and, and what you're doing is good brother because the ones that haven't given up you can yep. give them that hope brother you know we yep. can we can give them that hope you know 100%. anybody out there that's just chasing because that's what it is it's not the fact that you're sitting there going you know what i mean yep. talking about the, the life of crime or, or trying yep. to help people change their situation it's the fact that you're doing shit that they wish they could have done probably you know what i mean yeah so they never 100%. had the balls to do it they never had and the balls to face the criticism and to be fucking air raided and shit bro that's so Keep spot going. on bro that is so that's 100 percent what it is you know and like i always say that Shubs. i always say like you know, chase your dreams or you get paid to chase someone else's, you know what I mean? And they're, obviously they're getting paid to chase someone else's and feel free at me because I'm chasing mine, you know, which is helping people. 
And I'm a criminal, man. I've got tattoos on my face. I'm not supposed yeah. to be fucking successful on social media. But that annoys steroids, them even no. more, brother. Yeah, that annoys you know, them even yeah. more because, like, but you know. should be scum of the earth, you bastard. Yeah. You know what I mean? You, you shouldn't right. be cracking it. You know, what the hell? Like, I work all, like, you know, I've paid my taxes every year, worked all my life, you know, all of that stuff. But, like, what they don't realize is the system was set up for you to be like that, for you to go round and round and round, round and round. work for the man. Like, the, the system, the Rockefeller system that was set up in the 1800s, late, late 1800s, early 1900s, yeah. by John D. Rockefeller was to make workers to work for the free thinkers to make big yep. money for the free thinkers. You know what I mean? Yep. And that's why entrepreneurship and like, you know, what you're doing now, Hope Cartel, all of that stuff, yep. that ain't taught in schools, bruh, because nah. they don't want you. That's why you're taught to sit down, shut up, line up, put your hand up if you want to speak as soon as you're yep. five years old. And you start school, yep. and then if you if you end up in like a higher you know education, and you end up with a master's degree or something, a lot of the time, not every time, because sometimes you know I mean people have uh, uh, also learning in different ways, but a lot of the times those people are the most brainwashed because they haven't been you know they never lived in the streets or had to do different That's things right. and thought outside yeah. of that box because they've been boxed yeah. all their life. So if it's not inside of that system, it's it's a shit to them. So like when you when they see people going for you know, going for their dreams or doing something outside of that system that yeah. like, hey, uh, 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 probably irks something inside of them because part yeah. of them probably wishes they could do it. And also yeah. they're so systematically driven, like, you know, go to work nine to five, pay your bills, this and that, yep. buy the house, like all of that, not not realizing they're stuck inside of that rat race, that system. That's so, right. Yeah, 100%. Awesome, and that's exactly what it is, bro. Spot on. Fucking know if I totally agree with that. That's exactly what it is, you know, it is. And that's not our fault that we're connected. Bro, like, like, you know, put no, the phone no, down. No, no, go, go sort your family out, man. You know, go sort your shit out. Stop air raiding on the phone. That's not going to fix <laughs> nothing, you know. But um, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, it's crazy, man. Oh, but you know, like, I, 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 um, I blocked the shit out of them, and it's like, you know what I mean. I don't want anybody at my table that's going to fucking stab me in the back. So I'd rather oh, these man. motherfuckers put their hand up and comment on my shit, so I can block, mute, delete their shit, get them fuck out of my life, than sitting there. You know what I mean? Hating on me. Like, I don't need that negative attention, bro. I'm, I'm creating, uh, like, some of my videos, like, you know, I'll get people in the comments going, thank you so much, man. You're right. You know, like this. Now I need to be sober or fuck that life off and that. And that's what I need. I don't need someone yeah. coming into the comments going, no, he's just a fucking bald-headed blonk anyway. Don't listen to him. Because these people that I just dropped a bit of inspiration to, they might listen to one of them comments and that just fucked my fucking hard work up. So, you know, I'll get, I'll get rid of my clean, clean house, you know, I, uh, yeah. and it's, if they're in, if they're in my shit, if they're watching me, I think, well, hurry up and comment. Cause I want to fuck you off. You're not here for the right reasons anyway, you know? Yeah. And so like, as soon as they comment, I'm like, I gotcha, I gotcha. I, I, where do I say that? <laughs> I got you. I got no, you. I got you. I got you. You know what I mean? You're out of here. You know, yeah. you know what? Maybe, if, maybe fucking five years from now, whenever, Maybe I was, my videos are one of the ones that were going to help them maybe fucking put the bottle down and, you know what I mean, stop smacking the missus around or whatever it is, you know? Like, um, mm. you know what I mean? But they fucking missed that boat, man. And I'm like, well, fuck, man, sorry. Fucking bad luck for you, mate. You're aerated. You've got to go, you know? They missed a chance for me to push a bit of hope your way. That's the way I, I look I, at I, it, I you like know? What you so, said. I like what you yeah. said there, brother. I don't want anybody at my table that's gonna that could potentially stab me in the back, brother. And that's that's right. That's, yeah, and that's fair, brother. You know, as much as you want to push hope and push love, you also got to protect your energy, bro. So yeah, yeah, 100. yeah. Nah, that's all, so, man. So fuck them. You know what I mean? They don't want to fucking. They don't want to, <laughs> yeah. to put you down. Fuck, fuck them. See you, boy. Yeah, yeah fuck them. You know? yeah. Brother, take take us and take us five years from now. Where's where's Hope Cartel? Where's where's Gary Wright? Yeah. So, brother, I really hope that um I can uh you know I've got plans on um I got some I got some things, man. I have got some things going on. Yeah, you know, I, I would love a, like a, a wellness center. So I first Ooh. had the ideas of a rehab center. Okay. That was my I got into. I had people reaching out to me going, "Guys, man, like, I need to get clean." And I'm thinking, "What am I going to do if I can put you on the couch at my house? Like, what am I going to do?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, so it was a light bulb moment. I need a fucking facility where I can fucking put asses in beds and help them get clean. And the more I sort of held in that space and worked in this space, because I work with some of the best recovery experts in Australia, yeah. you know, other influencers and, you know, you know, visits to rehabs and all that sort of stuff. It's sobriety is one of my main niches, you know. Yeah. Um, I've learned that, you know, that shit's on the back door of the system, bro. Like, you're talking big farmers sitting right in the middle of rehabs, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. court system, yeah. jail. You know, bail to a rehab, then, you know, you get methadone, Valiums, you know what I mean? All that sort of shit. Mm. And like I said, with me, I did it the old school way. You so. didn't do rehab. You didn't, you didn't. Ah, yeah. drug courses and all that. That textbook shit ain't for me. I'm like organic as fuck, you know, like I'm expert yeah. by experience. And uh, 
So I, I think I lean now to more like a wellness center, sort of like how Wara and the boys, you know, with the men movement, that yeah. breath work. And so like, you know, if you, people where they find them, can find themselves, ground themselves, you know, we go on walks in the bush, you know, yoga, breath work, you know what I mean? Learn to eat well. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Um, you know, hold yourself in a group and, you know, give a fuck about the person next you to you. Because I think it was change their habits and not just not just get them off of the drugs or whatever addiction they have, but also change their life. Like like yeah. for the rest, like yeah, yeah, yeah. And start that's only, the core that's of it, you know. I think you take yeah. away the drugs. Someone's yeah. got a problem and they're taking drugs. You it's take pain, away the eh? drugs, Something. they've still got a problem, haven't they? You know yeah, what I mean? There's like, a pain. There's a pain there. there. Pain there. So yeah. yeah, want to work on the pain. That's I like right. that, so, brother. Yeah. yeah, I think something like that would be beautiful because, you know, when I did the workshops with Wara and that man, there was something so powerful, huge man, like super powerful about a broken man. You know, there he's crying. He's broken. And, and the other man goes, come here, brother, and puts his head on his shoulder, gives him a fucking rock-solid hug, and he cries on his shoulder, so I got you, bro. It's all right. Like, men helping men heal. Like, when you see a man crying on another man's shoulder, and it's not all fucking, you know what I mean, not all pussy old type shit. It's fucking, these are men, men. Like, these are warriors, you know what I mean? He's mm -hmm. like, come here, brother. I've got you big, strong, built, tattooed men, you know, like that, that makes a difference. But you know what I mean? They're not... No, you know, no, I'm like, come, I don't know what come you're here, saying, brother. I got you. You know what I mean? He's crying and he's like, fuck, I got you, bro. I love you, bro. It's all right. I got you. Like, that was huge to me. That was massive because I come from an area, you know what I mean, where you fucking, what's up, brother? You know what I mean? I'm holes yeah, in my game. Yeah, yeah. And, you yeah. know, my dad wasn't there to give me a hug and shit. You know what I mean? So, like, that was huge, man. That was massive. So, um, when I seen that, I was like, fucking, that's where it's at. You know, men helping men heal in a healthy environment. Do you know where um wow that's yeah, that's powerful you know, you know you just, even that yeah. even that little that little tidbit you said there about your dad not being there to hug you brother i think that's yeah. a big thing too because you know how you, you hear like the old school be like oh these millennials these days or whatever the whatever the yeah. fucking section we 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 yep. we're classed in Bro, you created us, you bastards. You know what I mean? Like, what do you yeah. mean? You yeah. know, you, you yeah. just like, just like, just like, just like when your parents came back from World War Two and treated you like shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and then the, you know, the repercussions of that, the ripple effect of that was you. In the same way that you've treated us, that doesn't mean we sit there and blame them. But like, you know, when yeah, they look yeah, down yeah. on the next generation, don't forget who was the one that birthed them and raised these kids, brother. That's right. You know what I mean? They, like, yeah. you know, maybe we needed a bit more hugs or something. I think that's beautiful, brother. What you said there. Under. Yeah, and that's what it is. Generational trauma is so real. And I'm like, and I don't want to play the victim. I'm not fucking nah, no, 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 exactly no. like you just said, bro. Like, you know what I mean? I'm not, I would never blame my mom and dad for what I went through. You know what I mean? I'm like, but I'm a, I, I understand that what they went through as kids, you know what mm. I mean? And then what I went through as kids is like, I'm going to pass that on to my kids. So you need to yeah. break the cycle. And that's what's saying about helping men heal their trauma, you know? Like, that's huge. Like, men are the foundation of the home. And there's so many broken homes. And that generational trauma just gets passed on. And, you know, the kids leave broken homes. And they end up having kids in broken homes, you know? And so, like, yeah. to be able to, you know, to be able to heal that shit and then, like, you know, and, and watch a man go flourish in his home, you know? Like, he's a, he's a strong foundation of the home and he's a happy man. You know, ha happy man is a happy home. You know, the kids are happy, the missus is happy. Like that's so good. When I seen that firsthand, I was like, "That's where it's at." That's like, mm -hmm. there's one thing getting a motherfucker off drugs, but yeah, but then real, what's like, next? Because because yeah, they'll go next? back to the so, drugs if you don't fix it, fix the core exactly, of the problem. That's yeah. exactly right. So that was super cool for me to witness, and I would love to own that. That would probably be my five year goal to own something like that, like a wellness center, yeah. a slash cool, like retreat wellness center where maybe when people just first got sober, they go through the sober thing, they're clean, then they come to somewhere like oh, and they spend three months there, and we help heal them. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm and they're, 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 they're all spiritual yeah. level. You know? Oh yeah, yeah I, th I thought you mean I was going to come to your wellness center, and there's like heaps of them all skinny ass just screaming at a phone. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Posting TikToks. <laughs> this is how I did it, guys. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, <not> good <laughs> oh, that's cool though, brother. Because I remember watching some of your interviews and talking about wanting to do a rehab, but now that you you've uh, you've progressed that idea into a yeah, not just not just that, but also let's fix the yeah. core of the problem. I like that, brother. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah. And you know, obviously, I'd love to move into it's a no brainer, you know, to get into juvenile centers. Um, you know, uh, schools and stuff like, you know, my content, you know, I'm, I'm telling the truth about the streets and the streets are lying. You know, they're telling everybody it's going to be mm -hmm. fucked. We're going to have gold chains and fat rides and we're going to be good boys and all that. 
that's yeah. all bullshit, man. You know, every cunt ends up fucking sitting in a cell broken because they haven't seen their kids or the missus is out with old mate cheating on them or fucking, you know, yeah. they didn't get to go to a funeral when one of their family members passed away. And this is the real nitty gritty of it. And, man, at the end of the day, kids missing out with their parents not there is fucking putrid. That's just shit, man. You know, you're a dad, you know what I mean? Like, nothing cool about, you know, you have to grow up on your own. And uh, so yeah. I would love to go tell them kids that the streets is bullshit. You know what I mean? Like, which is what I do on social media. But, um, you know, public events and stuff would be great. I think that'd be awesome. I've got it. I'm an SEO, but so that means I've had oh, get my work. Yeah, my working with children's check. But you can appeal it to a higher court. And I think it's just a whole process we'll have to play out. It's not, I never say never. There's still plenty of hope there. But it's just a whole yeah. process we have to go through. I mean, at the moment, social media is great. Um, that does yeah. the job. But I would love to be able to walk into schools and, and, and juvie centres and, and speak to the troubled youth, mate. That That's where my heart is, you know, 100%. And get them out yeah. the game before it's too late. And the cliche yeah. thing, this cliche saying is, if you can help just one, your job's done. You know what I mean? Which is, it sounds cliche. We hear it all the time, but it's so true. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, 100%. You save one life. Yeah. That's pretty cool, One man. life, you know? And, and, you know? Yeah, yeah, there's there's so not... many lives that that person could have hurt. You know what I mean, or, yep. or you know what I mean, not outside of their own. So yeah, no, nah. and and there's a ripple yeah. effect again. Uh, we talked about a little bit before about like the parents and and how like our parents, the, the, the not being there or being there and treating us like shit, whatever you know, uh, creates the environment, like creates the way that we, you know what I mean, sort of grow up and in the way we sort of be. Obviously, you're a product of your environment, as you say. I think eventually, though, you also be got to become a product of your decisions. So the same that happens here, but eventually you got to be like, I can't do this shit anymore. You know what I mean? And uh, I, I also think that the ripples of of like, like I said, a lot of our parents or, or great grandparents were like World War Two sort of. So, uh, you know, we look at it and we like applaud it like, oh, like like these our, our great grandparents or our grandparents went to war and that. But yeah. like the, the effects of what happens them coming home is like, I don't think that's talked about enough. But like, you know, through these kill children and down to, uh, you know, the next and then maybe to us. Yeah. Or, it's crazy, brother. I think. Yeah, I looked at it. I looked at the step before uh, and I was talking about there was a huge rise in like PTSD between World War One and World War Two. Yep. And the only correlation they could really, or the only reason, the causation, sorry, they could find is that in World War One, people couldn't get home as quick because, like, you know, planes weren't as, you know, weren't as yep. sharp, boats weren't as fast. So they had to yep. sit on a boat with their fellow men, women that went through the same thing, and they sat there and talked about it. You know what I mean? They got it all off their chest before they got home yeah. to their families. But in World True. War II, a lot of people were reintegrated back into society a lot quicker. So wow. they didn't get to face those things. And it makes sense, brother. Like, you, you, you know, you've been through a lot of shit. I've never heard you're, way, that. you're way more likely to sit there and talk to a, someone you know has been through shit. Like, when you've been yes. through it together and just let it all out. And then once wow. you do that, you can go home. And, and I, when, when I read that, I was like, fuck, that makes a lot of sense, eh, bro? That like, does, that eh? Sense. I've never heard that. And that makes heaps of sense, you know? And that's yeah. why I suppose, like, you know, if I was, if I had a family these days, I think, you know, dinner time and having, like, the phones away at dinner time would be like, you know, and how's your day? You know what I mean? How, how's your day at work, babe? Yeah. Or kids, how, what happened at school, you know? Because I think talking about it's huge, man. You know what I mean? Like, it is. You know, yeah, yeah. that's important, yeah. brother. As, as good as these phones are, yeah. that's you're right, brother. That's that's an important thing to to be able to sit there and have dinner together and actually communicate because yeah. that's what yes. it should be for. Is uh, that that, yeah. that 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 how was your day? What's going on? And then you know you can start to pour those things out. Nah, beautiful, brother. Maybe people yeah. that are, do have families can listen to that and think, fuck yeah, I'll do that. Yeah, hundred percent. Fucking on. Yeah, nah, bro. beautiful, um, my brother. Yeah, Jubs, thank you very much, bro. I just will say, no, man, no. like, you know, one of the major things that I, I've had to deal with, man, and fucking, yep. um, you would probably, you know, you, you've been a dad, I'm sure, like, you get it. You, you have you have children and shit, so you have, you know, compassion for your family, you know, um, whereas yep. I didn't, you know, like, so I really had to teach myself to love again, and that's where my dog come into it, because, you know, in the streets, you learn to be cold and not yeah. having a missus or a kids or anything like that. When I just ended up being solo, you know, in the end, bro, I was like, it was really hard to care. You know what I mean? Like to give a fuck, like, you know, because mm. we're built to not care, man. Like all these cunts in the comments, you know what I mean? They're just wired to not, their parents, but they're still wired to not give a fuck about what I'm saying, you know what I mean? Or anybody else. So it's weird. Mm. But so I just had to really, and that's part of my mission, you know, my content, like what yep. I do, they, uh, it's just compassion for the fellow human, man, is to actually, mm. you know, lead with my heart, you know what I mean? And give a fuck, you know, like, 
care that there's kids starving or fucking, you know, drug addicts fucking looking for their next rock or, you know what I mean, there's missus getting beaten up or whatever it is, like life that I'm so used to but was cold to, now I've yep. just like got to step into it with an open heart and I don't give a fuck how hard cunts think they are, you know, I think I've got, I'm showing more spirit and more cunt by showing up and speaking about the things that they don't want to speak to and leading with my heart and, and, and giving a fuck, you know, actually caring yeah. because people have got problems, you know, that that's one of my hardest things I've had to learn and it's still a learning curve. But, you know, so I would say to anybody out there that's living that fucking tough cunt life, yeah. that if you think just walking away from it's easy, it's not, man, because you're going to have yeah. to hold rewire your shit to care, you know what I mean? To give a fuck, you Rewiring. know, and it's, it's hard, it's hard work. Yeah. So shout yeah. out to you, brother. Shout out to people like Russell uh, Mansa. Shout out to Spanian as well. You know what I mean? Yep. All you guys like out there that are, you know, that are openly speaking about your war stories, speaking about, but not not even to glorify it, just literally being like, yep. wow, like I was I was a scumbag, cuz you know, yeah, you know, that's so, right. You know, like this, like shout out to you yep. boys, man. It's it's, it's yep. cool to see. Hey, before you, before I let you go, I just got a couple of questions. Is that all right, brother? Before we, of course, before of we bounce, yep. all yep. right, brother. Uh, if obviously you've we've talked about a lot of shit and you know there's yep. been a lot of gems here people can take. But if there's one more piece of advice that you could say to any young person out there that's looking at you, maybe potentially gonna go down the same path or just unsure yep. of what to do, what would you say? Yeah, I would just tell them that you know no one could tell me to step away from that life. I can't tell anybody not to do anything. Um, mm -hmm. it just doesn't work like that. You know, from when we're kids and we we touch something that's hot. You know what I mean? And we're told, don't mm. touch that, it's Bernie's. We've got to go touch it. So you burn your fingers, you never touch it again. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's, it's just it's what life's about. So those kids theory, are going to have to learn. Yeah. 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 They're going to have to learn, aren't they? They're going to have to learn themselves. I, I wish it was as simple as me saying, don't do it. It's going to be shit. It's not going to mm. work out well. But, um, you know, when they're ready for change, then they'll hear what I've got to say. So yeah. I just let them know that, listen, you're not signing up for fucking – like, you know, a really cool life, like you think you are, or like, you know, the movies or the music or maybe the older boys in the yards, you know, or the, in the streets are, are letting you know it's going to be like because they need you on side. What it is is you're going to end up hurting all your loved ones. You're going to end up fucking, you know, broken. You know, you spend most of your life in a fucking concrete box in a cell in prison. You know what I mean? You're going to miss yeah. out on loved ones' funerals. Your missus and kids are going to fucking lash you because you're never home. You know, you're always fucking going after boys heading to prison. You know, most of that life is trauma, trauma, trauma. You know, the streets are grimy. Um, it's yeah, an ugly existence. And so a lot of people end up masking that pain with drugs. 95% of fucking criminals end up washed up on drugs. You end up weathered, lost your mind, lost your teeth. You're on the methadone or you're fucking, you know what I mean, looking for your next crack rock or you're on the bottle. Do you know what I mean? That's how a life of crime ends, with masking yes. that pain. So just know that you're going to live an ugly, putrid existence and it's going to be a lot of fucking pain. Do you know what I mean? Don't think it's going to be all smoke and mirrors. It's going to be all fucking, you know, bells and whistles because that's some bullshit. That's not the truth of it, you know. But mm. go do you, boys. If that's what you want to sign up for, if you want to sign up for a putrid shit life, then go for it. Just know that it's what you're going for, you know? And I would say, don't have fucking kids. Don't bring kids into that shit, man. Keep the kids out of it, you know? And if you're going to fuck your life, don't go fucking have some children and fuck theirs too, you know what I mean? Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. That's powerful, brother. That's powerful yeah. for sure. If you could only eat one food for the rest of your life, what food do you choose? One meal. It's only one meal. So like, one you know, meal. It has to be, yeah, one meal, and you got to eat that for the rest of your life. What are you going? No, oh, bro, it'd have to be lobster. Yeah, lobster oh, every yeah. day, eh? Every day, lobster. bro. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> what about the lobster? Uh, boil up, brother. I'm uh, like my proud Maori brother, and yep. like it's pretty much well, it's a delicacy for us. So, yeah, it'll be yeah. bacon bones. Sorry to my Jewish and um, non pork eating people, and yeah, yeah. all the brothers, uh, you know, all the, all the different people out there that they need to pork, but uh, yeah, all, all, more for me, nah, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so it'll be a, <laughs> well, it'll be a bacon bone, uh, you know, bacon bone boil up, brother. With, uh, with dough boys and uh, water crisp, brother. Yeah, yeah. yeah that'll be me, Kazi, for sure. Um, if you had one superpower, brother, what superpower would you choose? That's a good question. Um, probably wouldn't it be seeing to the future. That'd be cool. Yep. Oh, you want to see? Yeah. You want to see into the future? Let's yeah, go. Yeah, that'd, be, that'd be trendy. Yeah. yeah, let's go. You're the trendy. <laughs> well, you'd know what would be trending, brother. Yeah, you're, yeah. The... <laughs> you're, the... <laughs> you're the see into the future. Uh, yeah. That's a new one. I don't see that one, bro. Yeah, shout out to you, my man. And, and, and lastly, brother, I just want to say uh, thank you. 
no questions, brother. Just Cheers, thank brother. you. Thank you for thank your time, you, brother. Time's the most valuable commodity we have as human beings, brother. So thank you for sharing your story, your journey, and your time with me. And anybody that listens to this episode for years to come, brother. Appreciate yep. you, man. Straight up. Thank you very much, Shubs. It was an honor, man. I had a good time too. We had a good laugh and that, that, that went well, man. I was comfy. It was a good, yeah, good, good, good little gig we had, man. So thank you very much. Big love, brother. Hopefully it's not the last time we sit down. Sweet as bro. Too easy. Thank you so much for watching this full episode of Mind the Mic. It takes a lot of time, energy, and effort to create these episodes. So to know that you've watched and listened to the entire thing means the world to myself and all our hosts. If you could, before you leave, please hit the subscribe button and share this episode out to as many people as possible. It would help us so much. Thank you again to everybody that's still here, still watching. Thank you for all your comments, all your shares, all the DMs. Appreciate you all. Make sure you follow us on every platform. Have an awesome morning. Have an awesome night, depending on where you are in the world. Mind the mic out. Oi, have you hit the link in bio yet? Watch full episodes on YouTube or listen on Spotify, Apple Podcasts and all streaming platforms. Duh.